Welcome to Stories Rock. My name is Leah Ruckberg, and it's really good to see all of you here tonight uh, for stories about the body. And our first reader tonight, Mary Brestowitz, works as a family navigator. That's someone who helps families and caregivers find support and resources for their children at the Levine Autism Center and Autism Up. She has published her story about Dancing with the Prince, now the King of Spain, and is looking for a publisher for her memoir about her Spanish misadventures. <coughs> Mary writes about growing up in a large family and her domestic disasters in her blog, Keep Mary Out of the Kitchen. <coughs> and a little known fact about Mary, uh, she may be a lousy cook, but she seems to have developed a green thumb. And she is the one who brought in the lovely lilacs over here. Oh, yay. 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 Oh, they're so I have not fragrant. them at Highland Park. They're so <laughs> good, too. So you didn't steal them? <laughs> not steal them. Okay, welcome, Mary. Thanks. Um, first, thank you, Leah, for being so gracious. I'm going to have to leave right after this. And um, I wish I didn't, but that's work. Um, so, hello. I often talk about how I'm the youngest of eight. Being the youngest suggests many things. The baby. The brat. The one who had it easy. Yep, I've been all those things and many others that my siblings have called me. The one thing that many people don't associate with being the youngest of a big family. A family where the mother was well above what they now clinically call advanced maternal age or geriatric mother <laughs> is birth defects. Not the ones my siblings like to taunt me about, the short height, the absence of mathematic ability, but one that has caused me to do things differently and was quite a bit of shame all of my life. I was born with a mutant thumb. <laughs> called a racket nail. It really should be called what it truly looks like. Fred Flintstone, big toeitis. <laughs> I became aware of my thumb when I was a little girl. We were dropping my father off at the airport, and I had my thumb in the side of the door. My father gave me a kiss goodbye and slammed the door shut right on my thumb. He opened the door and looked a bit shocked like he'd never really taken a good look at my thumb before. He kissed the throbbing red thumb, kissed me again on the forehead, and crossed my hand over my belly before shutting the door and giving my mother a sorry to leave you with a crying child look. I did what any doctor's daughter worth her salt would do. I compared the good thumb to the sore thumb. He squashed my thumb. Nonsense. It's always been that way. I started noticing thumbs. I longed for an elegant thumb that curved backwards. You want curved fingers? Look at mine. And Mama would hold out her arthritic hands with her fingers shaped like C's. Be happy, your fingers are straight. <laughs> at school, I was embarrassed to finger paint. Art projects where we used to, um, art, uh, as a, Art projects where we used fingerprints to make farm animals were reminders that this little piggy looked out of place on a hand, and it looked like it should be going wee, wee, wee all the way home to my foot. <laughs> when I started dating, I always arranged it so I was on my date's left, so that it was my right hand that could be held and caressed. If my date was driving and would reach for my hand, I would drape my right over my body <laughs> in what I presumed was a coquettish gesture and offer this right. <laughs> now, the mutant is advantageous in some situations. It has a superior grip. I think because the bone is slightly wider, it does hold better. Oh, and the mutant is an excellent thumb wrestler. <laughs> Winter is my preferred season because I can hide my hands in mittens. <laughs> When I grew up and lived in the city, I took my mother's glove collections with me. I couldn't bear to grasp a handle on the bus and leave the mutant thumb right in front of a stranger's face. It would have been damaging to see a toe, a toe thumb curling around a pole at you at 7 in the morning. <laughs> no, I covered it up. And I still hardly ever wear nail polish because it draws attention. 
So my husband married me in spite of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he claims he never would have noticed that I hadn't shoved it under his nose and said, look at this. <laughs> he thought it was cute. He still does. So we got married despite the thumb. And when I was pregnant with our first child, I went to interview pediatricians. I thought this one was a little over friendly as he kept trying to look at my hands. He shifted in his seat back and forth to look at me. I pulled back and covered my left hand with my right. Wait, wait, hold on a minute. Don't tell me you have one too. And he held out his thumbs. Good God. He had two mutant thumbs. <laughs> and I don't know, the pediatrician was nice and everything, but he's not my children's pediatrician. <laughs> I mean, seriously, would you trust a person with two thumbs that look like Fred Flintstone's big toe with your children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>